Iran has admitted that its military unintentionally shot down the Ukrainian passenger plane on Wednesday due to human error. Foreign Minister Javad Zarif adds that it happened at a time of crisis caused by U.S. adventurism. Tehran's investigation chief says the black box data will now be sent to France. RT correspondent Dollar Corner joined me earlier in the studio with the latest. Well, most recently we heard from the, the Canadian Prime Minister who called this event uh, a national tragedy, and he also said that he expected full cooperation from Iran in the investigation. We also heard from Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky, who said that um, he, expe he expects Iran to take full responsibility and for the investigation to continue without any obstruction. Earlier today, we did hear from Iran's president, who promised just that and called this event an unforgivable mistake. The armed forces' internal investigation has concluded that regrettably missiles fired due to human error caused the horrific crash of the Ukrainian plane and the death of 176 innocent people. Investigations continue to identify and prosecute this great tragedy, an unforgivable mistake. Now, Iran's president also promised compensation for the families of the victims, and the country's supreme leader has called for the, um, for the findings of this investigation to be made public. Now, earlier we also heard from Iran's foreign minister, who gave, uh, he actually highlighted another reason for why this uh, crisis took place. A sad day. Preliminary conclusions of internal investigation by armed forces. Human error at time of crisis caused by U.S. adventurism led to disaster. Our profound regrets, apologies and condolences to our people, to the families of all victims and to other affected nations. Give us a bit of background here. What exactly is the foreign minister referring to? Well, just last week, a U.S. airstrike killed a high-ranking, uh, the high-ranking Quds commander, uh, Qasim Soleimani, and that brought tensions in the region to a level that we haven't seen in decades. Uh, this guy was considered a hero to many in Iran as he was instrumental for the defeat of ISIS in Syria. So the government promised harsh retaliation for his death, and that came in the form of several airstrikes against U.S. military bases in Iraq that happened just mere hours before this plane went down. So at that time, the Iranian military was anticipating some sort of possible U.S. response to those strikes, um, which explains why they thought that this airliner could have been an enemy aircraft. They said that it was approaching a military installation. Clearly, tensions were very high. Are there other cases of countries shooting down planes by mistake? Yeah, unfortunately, when tensions are this high, like you said, accidents uh, are more probable. For example, during the Cold War in 1983, uh, the Soviet Union mistakenly shot down Korean Air uh, Flight 007, thinking it was a spy plane. The plane went into Soviet airspace at the time uh, that a U.S. reconnaissance mission was going on as well. And in 1988, the U.S. Navy shot down an Iranian airliner, killing all 290 passengers, uh, because they thought it was an Iranian fighter jet. Now, at that time, uh, the then Vice President George H.W. Bush said he had nothing to apologize for and that he didn't care about the facts regarding the, the shooting of that plane down. We're now joined live by Sayed Mustafa Kashchesham, political analyst in Tehran. Now, the foreign minister blames U.S. adventurism for the crisis situation that led to the human error that caused the tragedy. What do you make of that? Hello, and thanks for having me. Well, uh, it's true because the Donald Trump uh, threatened to first they assassinated Qasem Soleimani, as you stated. Uh, then uh, they threatened that they would retaliate against any Iranian strike uh, in reprisal for Qasem Soleimani's assassination. So Iranian uh, defense systems were on alert, and uh, they were expecting uh, attacks by uh, U.S. Uh, airplanes, as stated in the armed forces statement. Uh, uh, there have been reports that some uh, hostile objects, flying objects, have been appearing on radar screens in some of uh, some parts around the country. So uh, as soon as uh, they they saw uh, a plane coming to uh, a sensitive IRGC base, they have uh, you know rushed to and jumped to the conclusion and fired. Un, under uh, normal circumstances, such uh, incidents are less prone to happen and uh, less probable. Uh, and especially now, everyone wants to know why the uh, plane has been approaching, uh, you know, the IRGC base. And of course, there is a logical explanation for that. And the civil aviation organization should come up with a result after decoding and extracting information uh, from the black box uh, under 
you know, investi the investigation which is run by the civil aviation as well as in, uh, international investigators. They should come up with a result, but it takes time. But there is al already a logical explanation why this has happened. When it comes to the black box, we've learned now that it will be sent to France for analysis. Why do you think it's not happening on Iranian soil? Well, uh, uh, let's remember that uh, the uh, uh, armed forces statement uh, uh, explains that uh, the plane has dived down and made a sudden uh, uh, turn to the right to make a U-turn, most probably to make a U-turn back to the Tehran airport. Uh, uh, repair and man maintenance records of the flight show that there has been something wrong with the uh, uh, radar and radio systems of the Ukrainian plane. And uh, the, the, uh, the radar uh, uh, system and the radio equipment of the plane must have been malfunctioning or stopped operation. That explains why uh, the pilot has left the safe international civilian corridor, dived down, turned right, uh, to make a uh, 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 you know U-turn back to Imam Khamenei Airport in Tehran in order to avoid losing sight of the airport, you know it's very highly dangerous and rather impossible to find another runway or airport if you have lost uh, your radar equipment and transponder equipment, and that explains why uh, uh, the pilot has failed to establish a contact with the tower of the Tehran airport. Um, uh, under such circumstances, uh, let's 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 remember that you are in charge of air defense. You stand on your own uh, in Iran. Uh, the defense units operate under uh, you know independently uh, and based on the command of each unit, and not the central command or the headquarters of IRGC airspace or uh, the armed forces. When Iran wants to go on offensive, like what happened last week with regard to the attack on the U.S. Uh, uh, base in Iraq. Uh, the, high, uh, the highest ranking officials of the country and armed forces should issue the command. But for defense, that's not the case, and each unit operates independently to defuse uh, the threat. Therefore, the guy that has been sitting there uh, uh, and, and, and receiving reports that uh, around the country there have been sighting of some hostile aircraft coming, and under situations a few hours after the missile attack, they were expecting American uh, missiles, American uh, aircraft coming. Um, he has, uh, you know, jumped to the conclusion when he has seen that a plane uh, away from the civilian corridor is diving down, lowering altitude very fast and coming to uh, the IRGC base. And of course, this doesn't mean that the guy in charge or all those in charge of uh, the air defense uh, uh, are clean. No, they should stand trial. Uh, there is already an investigation. Tehran's prosecutor general has issued a statement uh, to the armed forces calling for immediate and fast action to, uh, you know, uh, deal with all those responsible uh, with this uh, happening, with this regrettable and unforgivable uh, uh, mistake that has cost the lives of 176 people. Initially, Iran denied any uh, possibility that the plane had been shot down, saying that it was scientifically impossible, and yet now we have this admission. Why do you think they made that denial in the first place? Well, uh, what was said was by the civil aviation organization. Uh, the civil aviation organization doesn't have any kind of ex access to the secret uh, information of the armed forces. The statement that came today uh, uh, was by the Iranian armed forces, and they have done uh, an independent investigation of their own personnel, independent from uh, the flights and from the civil aviation organization, and they have, they have come up with their uh, with the result on their own side of the story. Uh, it's good that they didn't wait for the civil aviation organization and the international team of inspectors and investigators to come up with a result because it would take weeks or months for them to extract data from uh, the black box and come up with uh, a final report. So uh, they have uh, cut short, uh, you know, uh, uh, this, this, this way and, and they've hastened uh, investigations on their own side of the story after they, uh, they, they, they were, there were some theories and assumptions that there might have been a strike, a missile strike. And uh, they came up with a conclusion a couple of days yesterday 
they uh, have uh, come up with the final results and presented it to the Iranian leader and uh, the president, who called for an immediate and urgent uh, meeting of the Supreme National Security Council. They were already, uh, you know, they, they uh, 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 had the results uh, late at midnight, and uh, because the papers were already out, they waited till uh, early this morning to uh, uh, publicize the story and, and the report. Um, and of course, and I reiterate that this is only half of the story that has been announced by the Iranian armed forces on their own side. We should also wait uh, for uh, the civil aviation organization and international team of investigators to, to let us know exactly why uh, the plane has dived down and uh, left the uh, international civilian corridor that I just, uh, uh, I just explained uh, one of the logical um, uh, assumptions that could, that could have happened. At this point, we've had reaction from both uh, Ukraine and Canada, both calling for a full and open investigation and to bring those responsible to justice. But what kind of reaction do you think we'll see from the U.S., who's had the finger of blame more or less pointed at them as well from Iran? Well, for sure, the United States would go for justifying all its actions. Donald Trump would justify for uh, uh, claiming that all the information that he has already been uh, giving to the public with regard to the missile assad attack on al-Assad, uh, Ain al-Assad Air Base in Iraq has been true. Uh, because uh, they have not let the public know about the developments in that air base. They have sealed uh, the air base to all uh, uh, foreign parties, including Iraqi government, Iraqi army, for the first 24 hours uh, in order to, uh, you know, uh, avoid uh, the leaking of any kind of information. Later, they, they, they came up with the result that no one has been hurt in that attack, while there have been uh, opposite reports, contradicting reports, saying that tens of U.S. military have lost their lives uh, and, uh, and hundreds more have uh, been wounded uh, in, that, in those missile attacks. And now they could rely on this development in order to claim that uh, their, all the information that they've been presenting about, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the developments uh, w w with regard to the missile attack have been true. And uh, they could raise probably by more credibility for their statements in this regard. We've been speaking with Syed Mustafa Kashchesh, political analyst in Tehran. Thank you.